Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another Global ed Education webinar. We've got an exciting opportunity for you all to take part in and to listen to. Um, it's a key partner of ours. It's a university that we all really admire here at Global Education. Um, we've got two gentlemen on that are going to be giving a conversation and a presentation and a bit of a roundtable discussion at the end of this um, presentation. So please do put all your questions in the Q&A section and um, we will go from there. I just before I introduce and who present to you who we're going to be talking with tonight, um, just give it a couple minutes for people to join in on. Um, we do have around 25 people that have signed up for this webinar. We do know some school counselors are also um, engaging with us tonight as well. Um, but as always, all of our webinars are recorded and we do share them across the website and on social media as well. Um, and Global Education is your in-house admissions teams here. So we speak directly with the universities. We're always in contact with them. Um, and you'll see throughout this conversation as well that we're, we, we love these guys. We love what they do. And I'm um, sure you will all appreciate it. All right. I think we've got everybody on. This is a first. This is brilliant. Thank you, everybody, for joining in so quickly. Um, so let's get straight into it. Tonight, we've got UWE Bristol, University of West England here. We've got Sam Micklewright and Guy Cole. Sam is our counterpart who works. He's the regional manager for Africa. And Guy Cole is the performance board manager at Bristol. So guys, I'm going to hand it over to you if you want to get your shared screen on. And um, the floor is yours, guys. Great. Thanks, Sam. Thanks. Right, so I'm hoping that I can see my screen now. Yeah, just want to put the full screen on. Yeah. We get this sorted. All good, guys. Is that the full screen there? Yeah. Perfect. It is for me. Right, perfect. Uh, yeah, so uh, once again, my name is Sam Mikroy. I'm the regional manager for Sub-Saharan Africa at UWE Bristol. Um, we have, uh, I guess, two names. We have our long name, which is the University of West of England, and then we have our short name, which is UWE Bristol. Um, Guy, do you want to quickly introduce yourself again? Yeah, so my name's uh, Guy Coles. I'm the performance sport manager at UWE Bristol, and I'm going to talk uh, partway through this presentation about sort of the opportunities of South Africa and what what you could uh, support you might get if you, you came to UE. Perfect. Right, so I will start the presentation. I'm gonna go over a general overview of UE to begin with, um, five, 10 minutes, and then Guy will jump into the form of sport. So um, there we go. I'm gonna turn off my video while I present and I'll begin. Yeah, just to show you what's on the screen at the moment, this is probably one of our most famous landmarks in the city of Bristol. Um, this is Clifton Suspension Bridge on the left. And then Clifton is to the right, which is probably one of the oldest parts of the city. Uh, and then the river under it as well. So yeah, as a university, we are roughly around 30,000 students. Um, last year, we had 17% of our students being international. This year, it should be around 19 to 20%. We've had a lot more international this year. Um, we're based in the city of Bristol. And I just want to quickly go over a number of our, our rankings. Um, so we're ranked 21st in the UK out of 121 universities. That's in the Guardian League table. Last year, we were in the top two in England for student satisfaction uh, in the National Student Satis uh, Survey. Uh, and we're in the top 20 for um, graduate employment prospects. And the UK is quite a desirable place to study at the moment um, for international students because the UK government has just reintroduced the post-work study visa. It means that when you graduate from an undergraduate or a master's degree in the UK, you can uh, live and work for two years post-graduation. The university is split into, split into four faculties. So we have arts, creative industry and education, environmental technology, business and law, health and applied sciences. And I'll quickly go through all each four faculties. So starting off with uh, the first faculty, we're split into three schools. We've got art and design, Creative and Cultural Industries and Education and Childhood. Uh, this is for your really arty students, your designy students, or students interested in teaching or um, journalism, that sort of thing. Um, of these courses on the rest, this is only uh, on the right here, this is only a small number of our courses we offer, but I just want to give you a, a taste of what, what's available. 
Um, by far the most popular course on this list is the Masters of Wildlife Filmmaking. That's a really, really popular course every single year for international students. And we, we regularly train some of the best wildlife filmmakers in the world that go on to uh, work at places like the BBC or ITV doing documentaries. Um, after this, BA Animation is a really popular course for us. Um, I'm probably a little bit too old you're, or you're a little bit too young to remember this, but if you know the Wallace and Gromit cartoon, um, which is a really famous cartoon that's based at Ard, um, Ardman Studios, which is based in the city of Bristol. So as a city and a university, we're really popular for animation. We then have environmental technology, which is our second biggest faculty. Um, and that hosts uh, architecture and built environment, computer science and creative tech, engineering design and mathematics, and geography and environmental management. So you've got things like BSc architecture, product design, construction project management, uh, computer science, games technology, uh, audio and music technology, IT, that sort of thing. Once again, this is only a small list of the students within this faculty, just a flavor. Uh, we then have things like robotics, mechanical engineering, uh, electronic and computer engineering. Uh, and uh, this year we've just opened a brand new engineering building which, which was 60 million pounds. Uh, so state of the art facilities for our engineering students at the moment. And then lastly, things like geography, architecture and planning, transport engineering, project management. Our largest faculty is business and law, which is pretty self-explanatory. This is for our business and law courses. And this is all hosted in the Bristol Business and Law School, which was brand new in 2017, 55 million pound building. Once again, state of the art facilities for our students. And we have quite a long list of courses. Um, so we have loads of variations of business degrees like business and events, business of HR, business of marketing. We then have our law based degrees. Um, and for, if anyone's on the call that maybe has done uh, a diploma or a HND. Um, we have UE top up awards on the right hand side. These are one year degrees. So you, you effectively come and study the final year of a three year degree and, and then graduate. And these are normally for students that have done um, some sort of local diploma in their, in their home country, like a HND. Really, really useful. We get quite a number of South African students on our top up awards. And then lastly, we have health and applied sciences. Uh, so you have allied health professions, applied sciences, health and social sciences, and nursing midwifery. Um, for South Africa, allied health professions has actually been one of our um, most popular schools for about five, six years now. So we have um, physiotherapy and occupational therapy included within this school. And every single year we get at least two students on those courses from South Africa um, without fail, actually, which is really interesting. Uh, I think they generally really enjoy the courses. We also have things like optometry, biomedical science, forensic science, as I said, physiotherapy, psychology, nursing, paramedical science, biological sciences, lots of different things. So yeah, our short name, UE Bristol, obviously implies that we're based in the city of Bristol. Um, I would recommend coming to the city of Bristol if you can, generally, it's a really, really nice city. Um, we've got three universities based in the city. So you've got UE Bristol, who I work for, the University of Bristol, and then BIM, which is a, a, a music university. And what it means, what I'm trying to get is there's a large student population in the city. Um, so just from those three universities, you've got around 70,000 university students of a population of around half a million. So it's a large student population. Uh, and we're two hours away from London, an hour away from Cardiff, two hours away from Birmingham. Um, and then the bottom left hand side of that little small UK map um, where it sticks out bottom left that's Devon and Cornwall which we're quite close to which is really really nice surfing beaches nowhere near as nice as some of the beaches you've got in South Africa but still really nice place to go on holiday and just a few more Brist stats of Bristol so yeah half a million people uh, 91 languages spoken but obviously the the official language is English 180 different countries of birth um, we have our own airport, Bristol Airport, which flies to 125 de destinations. It won't fly to South Africa or Johannesburg or Cape Town or Durban direct, but for example, you could fly uh, Bristol, Amsterdam, Johannesburg, for example. Um, but for me personally, I normally get a two hour bus to Heathrow and then just fly direct. 
Uh, we're really well known for creative and digital jobs. Um, and we've also got a really large aerospace engineering industry. So things like Airbus, Wessex Hospital, uh, Wessex Helicopters, GE Aviation. We attract some of the best people in the whole of the world in terms of aerospace to the city of Bristol. And a lot of our aerospace students and generally a lot of our engineering students will do internships and placements at Airbus down the road. Uh, we have three campuses. So we have French campus, which is right at the very top of the picture there, uh, which is our main campus, our flagship campus. That's where me and Guy are based and uh, Performance Sport is based. You then have Glenside campus on the right, which is our allied health professions campus. This is where the nursing students go, the physio students go, the optometry students go. Um, and then we have what we call the city center campus at the bottom of the map there, which is actually a, a few different buildings. So you have Bower Ashton, Spike Island and Arnold Feeney. And this is for our, all our arts and creative industry uh, students. For all other courses like business, law, engineering, science, it's all at French Aid campus. And from the city center, which is uh, roughly where the Arnold, Fe Arnold Feeney building is, that's the city center, to French Aid campus by bus is around I think it's 17 minutes without traffic, but I would say anywhere between 17 minutes to 25 minutes and it's uh, 24 hours a day. Yeah, sorry. Bower Ashton, Spike Island, Arnold Feeney, these are part of the city centre campus. Then Glenside campus on the right. Uh, Glenside campus used to be an old psychiatric hospital. Um, apparently it's haunted and there's ghosts everywhere, but I don't personally believe that. Uh, but it's a really beautiful building. If you've ever seen something like One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest, which I'd highly recommend as a good film to watch. Um, it's very similar to the building in that, in that film there, but obviously a lot more updated and modern. <laughs> uh, and then you've got French Air Campus. So this is a map of French Air Campus, and obviously this is our flagship, our biggest campus. Um, so, uh, yeah, so number nine on the middle right, that's the centre for sport. You then have the pitch there. Um, off the screen to the far uh, to the far right, um, we have another. Well, guy can talk about talk about it later, but we have another purpose built area for sport as well. Uh, this is where we have our library in the middle. We have our engineering building, which is number five. As you can see on the picture, it's under construction, but in reality, that's now fully complete. Uh, number six is the business and law, which is open in seven, um, 2017. Uh, all the student accommodation is labelled one. So you can see it bottom right and also top left. This is all on-campus student accommodation. Uh, then we have Glenside Campus, which is a considerably older style of building, but also uh, very beautiful in its own right. It's got stained glass windows and things like that. Uh, it's based in an area called Fish Ponds in the city, which is actually where I live. I live a five minute walk away from this campus. Um, and I'd say this is a really, really good campus if you're interested in those sort of courses. Um, we have our own optometry street and our own eye clinic. So if you're looking to uh, become an optometrist and study optometry, you can actually work within an eye clinic on campus, which is completely open to the public. So it's a fully working eye clinic where we do eye tests and then obviously the dispensary as well, we dispense glasses. For example, I wear glasses. You might have noticed it in the video earlier. I went to the optometry suite uh, I want to say four months ago now and had my eyes test and sadly had to get new glasses because they are getting worse year on year. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to hand over to Guy now who's going to talk about performance sport. Um, obviously, Guy, I've got control of the presentation, so maybe just give me a nod or a yes when you want to go to the next slide. Yeah, that's no worries at all. Can, can you hear me, Sam? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, if we go to the next slide then, let's, uh, let's crack on with performance sport. Can you see the performance spot, sport slide now, Guy? Yeah, that's the great. So thanks, Sam, for, for introducing me to, to I don't whoever's on the call, I think there's a maybe agents, but also some students that are interested in the opportunity. So just a brief bit about me. I'm the performance sport manager at the university. So I oversee our free performance sports and also a range of individual athletes that we have across um, you know, multiple sports that aren't within our sort of focus group. Uh, as the slides show there, sort of our vision for UE Bristol Performance Sport is to provide an inspirational environment to student athletes seeking to excel in their sport. Um, and the aim is to provide an elite performance framework that supports student athletes embracing their potential in sport and academia. 
And I think that's a really important point to, to mention. You know, we really want students first who are looking to study and alongside that, are, you know, either have the potential to be elite athletes or already elite athletes in their chosen sport. But the key thing is, is we really want to recruit um, people that are coming for their academics first. That's really important to us. Um, and we do track how students perform academically. So that's with a range of um, we have feedback from their course, um, the course leaders and module leaders. We also I have access to the um, to the online student uh, report so I can see what grades students are getting throughout their course. Um, and that can have an impact on how much support they get from us. I think the key thing for performance for you is we, we're not a sporting university as such. We're not the, the classic traditional, um, you know, Loughborough University or Bath University. So we, we've decided to focus on free sports primarily, which are American football, basketball and squash. But we recognise that we want to try and uh, support a number of athletes across a range of sports. So, yeah, thanks, Sam. So as, as it shows there, the next slide, the, our free focus sports are along the top. Um, and they are geared around where we think we can target recruit for the sports, but also what what's happening in the region in terms of the sports. So basketball, American football and squash are very strong in the Bristol area. So American football has the Bristol Aztecs team, which is a, a local team that plays in a national league competition on the weekend. The basketball program ha, um, in Bristol has, there's a professional team called the Bristol Flyers. So they play in the top league and then squash that has um, currently has I think between five and 10 players in the world top 100 training in Bristol. So there's, they're very strong sports in the city, not just at the university. Um, as it says there in the second point on the slide, we'll consider any student athlete who plays a sport within the Bucks framework, such as rugby, football, and netball. These are three good examples of sports where we maybe don't have the same focus as we do for the free performance sports, but we do invest um, support in terms of coaching and physiotherapy, strength, conditioning. Sam's just moved the next slide on. These are all the sports that are available in the Bucks framework. Now we don't represent, UE Bristol, sorry, doesn't, um, isn't represented in every sport on here, but we are in the majority. Things like clay pigeon shooting, um, some, of the, some of the power events like wheelchair basketball, um, we don't have uh, representation, but the majority of them we do. And we will consider a scholarship across a range of sports. Um, to get you know we can give you an example of that I think if your next slide does that have a list of all the Sam if you could just go on to the next uh, slide that would be good <laughs> no oh, okay oh sorry well here's the award um, so this is what the offer is for international student athletes so it's up to 30 percent tuition fee discount for every year of studies so that's in undergraduates for each year on your undergraduate course and obviously postgraduate is for your one year of study um, access to the UE Bristol performance facilities so that's uh, gym membership, uh, physiotherapy support. There's actually two gyms on the French A campus. There's a center for sport gym, which is what um, Sam pointed out. And that's the sort of the commercial gym for all student population. And we have our own performance gym, which is by the student union, which only the performance athletes can access. At the performance gym, we have a full-time strength conditioning coach um, and he works with priority athletes. So within the performance program, there's certain athletes that will get even more support from the strength conditioning coach. And that's usually based on the level that you're coming in at and also your commitment with us. Uh, it says membership on Team Builder. Team Builder is a strength conditioning app and it provides you with individualized and personalized strength conditioning programs. So you can perform them either in person with our strength conditioning coach or do them remotely. Um, and they will get, it'll get mapped out into your academic year. So you can follow that. Um, access to physiotherapy. So hopefully by this academic year, we're going to have somebody in post full time to be a physiotherapist for our performance athletes. So if you have an injury, but also for prehab and rehab and return to play protocols, they'll be able to help you with that. And then all, and then finally, sort of the extra support services, sports psychology, nutrition and performance lifestyle. We have a range of support in those areas as well, um, depending again on the level you are and also your need. Thanks, Sam. Give you an idea of this typical week of a student athlete. So it's very, it's very similar across the free focus sports. They'll have probably two training sessions a week and two, two, one, between one and three strength conditioning sessions a week. Now, 
with some of our sports, like American football, for example, we now have a full-time American football coach. So actually there'll be more training than what's on there. So with the performance athletes, our American football coach will do individualized one-to-one and one-to-two training sessions. So there's an opportunity to progress even more within that program. Um, but with basketball, squash and the other three sports that I think we're on the netball, rugby and um, football, there is scope to do additional workouts, but they might, might not always be coach led. Um, we recognize the importance of academic uh, load as well. So we try and taper the sessions and your um, strength conditioning load a lot around your assessment periods as well. So we recognize that potentially you might need to um, minimize what you're doing at certain times of the year, depending on the academics you have. Thanks, Sam. And then, yeah, how to apply, satisfy entry requirements and provide evidence of excellence through representation at an elite level within your sport. I think this is really important um, for everyone on the call. Obviously, we'd love to have Olympians. Well, I mean, most are in Tokyo at the moment, but they would I'd love to have Olympians considering applying to come to university, you know, at UE Bristol. And we have got an Olympian actually who's out in Tokyo at the moment who will be studying with us in September. Um, but across a range of sports, including our performance sports, we, we look at each case depending on how are they going to impact the program that they're applying to. So the, my example being a rugby player, if they applied and provided evidence and evidence really is video evidence is the best assessment tool for it, which, which says on the application tips, if they can demonstrate through their video and, and their evidence that they would be one of the better players on the first team at UWE, regardless of their standing in their sport overall, there is potential they could still get the scholarship. Um, so it doesn't necessarily have to, have to be that the athlete is at the top of their level in their sport, in their country. They could just, it's, 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 it can be comparative to the level that UE are currently playing at. And to give you an example of what I mean, the basketball, American football and squash programs, they all play in Bucks Premier, which is the top league in, in the country. But some of our other sports play in Western 1A or Western 2A, which is a division down. So actually the level of competition and also the level of people involved might be slightly lower, but that doesn't mean. Um, so we'd be looking at the level relative to the, uh, the players around them, if that makes sense. And obviously at the end of Q&A, if I haven't explained anything, please, please ask me then. Um, yeah, and I think that's pretty much it. Like we're keen to develop more links with worldwide recruiting. This year, we've got an Australian and American football player coming on an undergrad predominantly. And Sam helped us um, with the American recruitment while the regional manager was on maternity lead for the Americas. You know, we, our primary area at the moment is America, especially for American football and basketball. But we have had in the past uh, South African elite athletes on the squash pe play, uh, pages earlier. You saw a photo of a female squash player, Makosi. Yep. Perfect. And she was South African. I think Sam, that's before my time, but Sam helped to get her across. Um, and I believe she ended up, when she finished with us, she was around 120 in the world, maybe it definitely between 100 and 150. Um, something to note is if you're coming to the UK as an international student athlete, you'll be coming on a, a student visa and um, a tier four visa. And that means that you can play for Bucks in an amateur capacity but you can't play sort of professional sport while you're studying. Um, and it's different for each sport, but there are, the rules have changed in the last few years. So there are limitations on what you can do while studying in the UK and playing sport, but that you can still have a really, you know, especially if you're playing for one of our um, main teams, you can have a really uh, positive experience. Some of our current student athletes here. Um, so, this is what we've had to 2021. So during our COVID year, this is the this is the performance athletes across a range of sports. So 17 squash, 10 basketball, nine American football. So there are three focus sports. Rowan had six, and rowing is a sport that we have a full time coach with, and hockey also is a sport we have a full time coach with. The rest of the sports beneath that, there isn't full time coaches. Some are sessional coaches, so they are there for your trainings and your game, um, and some. Uh, do more than that um so men's rugby union for example he's on a part-time basis but he's there for about 15 to 20 hours a week um so as you can see at the bottom the bottom there that's my favorite sport the old sport of tampolining yeah. um <laughs> must be must be a new one for paris 2024 that one but yeah that's a that's trampolining and that's our um he's a european silver medalist um 
we don't see too much of him. So he's he's off always um, training and, and going to world events. But uh, but yeah, shows you the range we've got. And we're open to anything, even if it's not in the Bucks framework, there is potential if we feel that there's enough sort of, um, you know, that we can support you the right way. And also there's enough for the university to benefit and also for you to benefit, then we would look at any sport. Um, yeah, and I think that's that's it really, unless there's anything else. Well, thanks, Guy. Um, I'll just finish off the rest of the presentation, a few more generic slides, a bit more housekeeping. Um, just uh, one thing to know about the sport application before I move on is that we, on the application tips, obviously you would have read it, but just to mention it, um, we really want to see videos of you performing. Um, and I know that a lot of the Saffron school, uh, school network in terms of team sports, I know there's a lot of video uh, profiles and highlights of players, and that's the sort of thing we want to see when it comes to the application. And we can share the online application link um, with Global, who can send it out after the webinar, or we'll put it in the chat for you. But yeah, just to finish off, um, just say we have accommodation on campus, uh, on all of our campuses, and we guarantee accommodation for all international students if they apply for a certain deadline, and that's normally June the 8th. Um, obviously, for South Africans, that is really no issue to hit that deadline because the majority of your results come out in January. So obviously you've got from January onwards to apply, receive your offer, uh, confirm if you wish to confirm, and obviously then apply for your accommodation before June 8th. Um, so that there isn't really too much of an excuse for South Africans. Um, it's a bit harder for other nationalities that maybe get their results later on in the year. Uh, we have a dedicated team on campus called Global Student Support. So obviously you're more than welcome to chat to me when you're studying on campus, but Primarily, my focus is to talk to future students like yourself. And then when students arrive on campus and they tra transition, um, they then move on to the global student support team, which is a whole team. It's a team of six and that their one job only is to look after international students. That's it. Um, so they arrive, they arrange pre-arrival support. They arrange your airport welcome, your airport meet and greet where we pick you up at the airport and bring you to the campus. Uh, we have uh, meet and greet sessions of our global buddies, which are current international students we employ. Uh, we also have just drop in sessions if you want to just drop in, ask a question face to face. Um, and then we also have things like summer schools, uh, English classes. But I'll be honest, a lot of our South African students don't need, don't require any English, so normally skip the English class in classes. Lastly, I just want to touch on fees. Um, so. Uh, I'm presuming the majority of your international fee pairs, your South African, um, don't qualify for EU or, uh, or home fees. So for undergraduate, it's £13,500 per year. Obviously, for next September, September 2022, it might be a little bit more, but um, generally, we only got maybe anywhere from £200 to £400 per year in terms of cost. Um, for postgraduate, it depends on the course, but it will range from 13750 to 14500 and then we have our MBA, which is the Master of Business Administration, which is 15,750. Obviously, as Guy mentioned earlier, if you are awarded one of the Performance Sport Awards, um, you can receive a 30% discount year on year. So obviously for an undergraduate student, um, if you're getting a 30% discount every single year, that's, um, that's a pretty hefty chunk off your fees, to be honest. Um, so yeah, def definitely worth investigating. Uh, we have some larger scholarships down at the bottom. But these are academic scholarships for postgraduate students, which are 50% discounts or higher. But obviously, I'm not here to promote those. I'm promote, here to promote the Performance Sport Award. And then just lastly, in terms of what you need to gather for an application, this is for the academic application. And obviously, Global Education will apply on your behalf and you can apply through them. But effectively, an online application, which is what Global will do for you, um, a copy of your highest achieved school diploma or transcript or certificate, depending on how it's worded at your school. So for example, if you're undergrad South African, normally we would recommend you apply maybe November, December time with your um, either your mock results or your final term results of your NSC or IEB. And obviously once January rolls around, you can then send us your final certificate. Obviously if you're postgraduate, um, we would just wanna see all your transcripts to date of your university degree. And then obviously come January, you can send it to your final certificate. Um, you'd have to write a personal statement. So a personal statement is basically why you want to study at U of Bristol and why you want to study that course, as uh, simple as that. Um, some courses require a portfolio. 
So things like um, art design, animation, journalism, those are the things that require portfolio. Um, some of our courses require online interviews, things like nursing, physio, OT, a lot of the health courses. Um, you need a minimum of one reference for undergraduate applications and two references for postgraduate. Obviously, this is an academic uh, application, so we're looking for academic references, or um, we can also use work experience references as well. Uh, you need to provide some sort of English language qualification. However, for South Africa, we accept your high school English language as long as you've got a four or above in your NSC or IEB. If you've got um, a three, unfortunately, you'd have to do an additional English language test. Um, if you've been to the UK before to study, uh, we need copies of your previous UK visas. Um, and then the last point is just meeting the minimum entry requirements, um, which I can go over the entry requirements if anyone wants to ask me them at the end. So yeah, that's the uh, end of the presentation. I'll just leave uh, one final slide, which is a virtual Bristol slide, which just has some, uh, these are more touristy um, things, but we've also got the, the webinar link on our website for future webinars. So as a university, we also run our own webinars on various different topics, could be university-wide topics or could be subject-wide topics. So please have a look at that link and sign up to whatever webinars you want to. Um, and then obviously, please also visit, visit bristol.co.uk, which is the tourism website for the city of Bristol. Uh, and that's it. Thank you. Brilliant, Sam and Guy. Thank you very much. That was um, pretty interesting. I've got quite a few questions that have been pinged to me from a couple of councillors that have been listening in on this, um, as well as the global councillors that are listening as well. Um, but I've got a student question I want to get to first. So let's get this one. I've got Matthew here, who's been on. Matthew, thanks for joining us. And I will drop you an email with some further information. Um, he was asking about the rugby focus. And I, I don't know if I was answering a message or I missed it. But could you guys go a bit on to the rugby, please? Yeah, that's, that's fine. Although I'll pick it up. Although Sam's a very keen rugby player. So maybe I'll let him, uh, you know, give a bit of a feel of what the uh, local, lo local scene's like. But I... In terms of UE performance, Men's Rugby Union, I'm assuming Matthew's asking about that, Men's Rugby Union play in what's called South 2. So you have the, the Bucks Super League, which is like, you can if you look on YouTube, you can find that. They stream all their games. It's a quite a high level of rugby. Um, and then you have South 1 and South 2. So technically third division in the country, but they are they're sitting in that prem level of sport. So it is... It is as you can imagine, as, as South Africa is, you know, England is very strong in, in rugby. So um, the, there's a lot of depth. So even though they're playing in the third division, they're still playing very high level. Um, and really, I would say one of the only reasons uh, we haven't pushed to go Bucks uh, Super League is, is, is finance. It costs a lot of money to play. It is almost a professional program in that, in that sense. Um, but yeah, that, that's, that's the level that UE play at. And, and I think there's a lot of support. You know, like I said, he's not, we don't have a full-time coach for rugby, but he is embedded in the program. He's been coaching over 10 years. Um, he has coaches supporting him as well. that are employed. He in season, he works between 15 and 20 hours a week. So he, he you know, he's there and he supports throughout. So I think it, it's one of the, definitely I'd say one of our stronger programs that doesn't sit in the performance sport model. Uh, Sam, do you want to sort of chip in with your, Sort of, sort of view from rugby in general in, in, in Bristol and the surrounding area or? Yeah, so um, generally speaking, the, the southwest of England is uh, pretty rugby dominated. Um, and then as, as an area, so you've got Bristol, Bear, so as premiership teams, so actual national premiership teams in the UK, you've got Bristol Bears based in, obviously in Bristol. Um, and I play for a team called Cotton Park, which is actually quite nice because our, our pitch backs onto their training pitch so we can get to watch them train quite regularly um down the road you've got bath which is a 50 minute train journey away you've got bath rugby club also plays in the premier league um an hour's drive north of bristol you've got gloucester and worcester who both play in the premier league as well uh, sorry the, the premiership of the the rugby premiership so you've got four teams all relatively close to bristol and then as a city um obviously we'd love you to come and uh study at u bristol and play for UE bristol but for example, if you're looking to play club rugby in Bristol, you've got, I think it's over 250 clubs in Bristol alone, uh, let alone the surrounding areas of Bristol. So it's it's a pretty strong um, rugby city and rugby area of England. 
be honest. Yeah, and I love that you guys have got that sort of setup where you can sort of help with the academia as well. And I think that's something that a lot of South African students look for is, yes, they want to play at a high level of sport, but, you know, visa issues, there's also that issue, there's also the living side of things. So being able to have that career and somebody like studying at UE Bristol is is something that Matthew should really look into. And um, by all means, please drop us a line and we'll, we'll have a further conversation with you. Um, I've got one question for Guy and, and Sam from two of you. Um, a lot of um, high-performing students or sports students in South Africa, or even just general students in South Africa who've been locked with COVID, haven't been able to play sport. Um, how does that affect the application process? Is that taken into consideration as well? Um, yeah, it's a, it's a really good question, especially, you know, as Sam said, and, and I made the point as well, is the difficulty we have is difficult to compare the levels internationally. So if you say I play for my local whatever team, I don't know what that means until I see it um, or our coaches see it. So we do ask, like, video is the best assessment tool. But obviously in COVID, globally, there hasn't been that many competitive games being played. So there might not be footage that's recent. I think the main thing we try and do is obviously coaches references will ask for as well. Um, and obviously speaking to the players themselves or the students themselves and trying to get an idea, but, and yes, it will be taken into consideration. Um, and, but even if there's a way around it, like it's for some of our sports, for example, um, like a basketball player, what we had, he just ended up taking video of himself, like training, if, if you like. And, and that gave us some idea of, of his level, of his athleticism and also his potential, even if it wasn't in a competitive situation. So I think we'll try, you know, we'll work around it if we can. I mean, you know, geez, it's been like a horrendous year and a half for, 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 for everybody in, in terms of sport and, and COVID. So, yeah, we want, we want to try and help the student. We don't want to try and uh, discourage anybody from applying. I will say this. It is for elite athletes, though, and I will tell you this. Every day I have an email from somewhere in the world asking for a scholarship, and it can, you know, and it could be somebody play. play. I had, I shouldn't laugh, but I had one once, just a guy, like, shooting hoops in his back garden, you know, and, like, you know, I, and the emails along the lines of, I really love basketball. Can I have a scholarship? And, and well, the answer is no, you can't. And I love the fact you love your sport, you know, and, but it does, so... Any students or counselors speaking to students, it is for elite athletes. Uh, yeah. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to be the best athlete, but you do need to be an elite athlete. So that's, yeah, I would say that. Yeah, no, it's, it's such an interesting world that we live in now. And, um, you know, we, we've had a couple of conversations with students and putting in, um, you know, videos of like their deep test, you know, their skill tests, agility tests, um, with things like yeah. that. To help those video processes if let's say they've got no competitive um, viewings things like that is something in the video that could be included yeah 100 like that like and i think as well it's dependent on the sport you know obviously you know, american football is a great example like physicality is such a big part and, and i know american football isn't a sport necessarily in south africa that's that big but you know what if if a six foot five you know, 300 pound guy who can really shift and could play O line or D line, uh, uh, play in uh, offensive line or defensive line for American football and be raw technically. But look, like we, we consider that because there's potential to be elite, you know, and it is very much a case by case basis, you know, and, and, and sport by sport, you know. And I think um, for rugby and netball in particular, I think if I send any information to our coaches, they would know the level of that sport in South Africa because South Africa is such, you know, so good at those sports, for example, they're going to, our coaches are going to be able to make good judgments on the level of the athlete. It's when it's, when it's in a sport that we don't really know that much about, or it's from a country that we don't know much about, you know, so like, so for example, you know, South African basketball, I don't know, like my background's basketball. I, I coach basketball for years. I couldn't tell you anything about South African basketball, but there might be that there's a player looking to come to you, Bristol, that could be really good, you know? So yeah. if that makes sense. No, it definitely does. It does paint a good picture to students that are looking to you know, handle this whole application process in, you know, in a COVID environment where South yeah, Africa yeah. and Zimbabwe, um, you know, this, this webinar that we're presenting goes to both Zimbabwe and South African students, which is very similar in the sort of sporting culture. Um, you know, and, and Sam, maybe we can segue a little bit into, I've got a question here for the classes. 
Um, what's the style of the lectures at UE Bristol? Is it um, big auditoriums or is it sort of small sort of educational type classes? And um, we've had a couple of those questions come through. Um, so all uh, complete mix, to be honest. Um, so tr traditionally for most courses, you would have one large auditorium lecturer per week and then smaller seminar groups. Um, uh, we've just gone back to face to face teaching or at least in September, we're going back to face to face teaching. So all of that will be face to face. There, there shouldn't be any online. However, I still I understand we're still doing the larger lectures online um, and then the smaller seminars will be face to face. But I think there will be the opportunity to do the face to face larger lectures as well. Um, we are a practice led university and uh, practice oriented university, meaning that um, if you're in a, not a lecture, but if you're in a seminar, um, we're trying to get you actually working through the problem, not just reading from a book for an hour or two hours. So for example, a really good one is law, for example, if you come and study law with us, um, traditionally law has been quite a dry subject that you might just read from a book or go to um, visit a courtroom where we've built four courtrooms on campus. So students can actually proactively do role playing while sat at the judge's desk and have the gavel and things like that. And we have a, a live jury, et cetera. So we try, and, uh, we try and put students as close as we can to their actual job that they'll do in their industry post-graduation before they, before they actually graduate themselves. Um, so yeah, we try and get a lot of work experience for our students um, within the seminars. And uh, adding on to that, actually, uh, you can, opt, especially undergrad students, you can opt for an additional year of study uh, well, sorry, it's called a placement year or a sandwich year, depending on the university you go to. And that's a year of uh, work experience in between your th second and third year of study. So you study years one and two. You then effectively leave the university for a year, work for a year while we monitor you. And, uh, and you'll be having monthly conversations with your program leader. And then you return back for your third year of study, but your fourth year overall. Um, we can't guarantee it, but normally that placement year is paid. And obviously we would... Uh, you would only do a placement within your area of study. So obviously if you're an aerospace engineering student, you might do your placement with Airbus, for example. Uh, but yeah, our, I like to think, it's not our official slogan or catchphrase, but I like to think as a university, as UE Bristol, our job is not necessarily to teach you, is actually to get you employed after and get, uh, put you in a lot better position when you leave UE from when you started at UE to get you employed in a really good career. I think mm. just, to, just to pick up on that as well, uh, for our performance athletes, we work with a, a business, uh, it's called Ad Victor, and they are a recruitment agency for athletes. So uh, it's actually run by, he, he represented England for rugby, but he was born in Cape Town, a guy called Steve, uh, Steve White Cooper. And what they, they recognize the soft skills um, that athletes have, and also uh, the qualities that elite athletes have, and they also work with the military. So what we do is our performance athletes can sign up with this company um, and they help them with their CV. Uh, they help them with networking. Uh, they help them on how to sort of create a shop window for themselves to advertise to companies. And an example, we've got a men's lacrosse player who's just been employed by CBRE. He's a, an American on a postgrad with us. And Ad Victor have got him um, full time employment on the two year uh, post work study uh, uh, work visa that Sam mentioned earlier in this call. So that, that's a, that is a great opportunity for international students where they can come over for their master's. They can be linked into the companies like Ad Victor, who can help them sort of promote themselves and develop all the, sort of the, the tools they need, if you like, to, to get a job and then stay and work in England for, for a few years. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, and it's something that that's only obviously happened this in terms of this year's graduating, you know, this summer's graduation. Mm -hmm. So that's a really great opportunity for, for all international students. Yeah, brilliant. Guy, I've got a question for you here for me. What why would you why what would you tell a student that's looking to come at UE Bristol who's good at sports, who's got the good academic and they would get in? What what's the one thing you want them to consider to make it to make their application UE? What what's the one thing you would tell them to, to really focus on? Um be honest. And I'm what I mean by that is like because I think it's such a transitional phase, higher education, you know, so we have a lot, not just from international students, but we have a lot of students who come to our university with all the intention in the world to continue their sport at a higher level. 
And then when they get to the university and they're living independently away from their family and their responsibilities change and their opportunities change, then they don't, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Don't really push through with their sport. Um, especially for an undergraduate, if they're applying, you know, for a 30% reduction and they're applying as an elite athlete, they need to be honest with themselves first of all, and then honest with us, you know, like this, we want, we want, you know, men and women, young men and women to come over to UE Bristol. And when they leave, it's hopefully a springboard to something even better in sport, you know, cause it's a very much, it's not the foundational stage of their experience, but it's very much like, um, a sort of stepping stone into what's next in terms of their, you know, sporting career. So I think, yeah, we, we want people that really want to push forward and also to bring the the culture and the program forward. So just be honest with yourself. Like, you know, if you're going to apply for something like this, that is an undertaking, you know, to, to get the scholarship, you are going to have to put in the work. Um, and having said that, that doesn't mean you have to do above and beyond, you, you know, you've got to commit to playing for UWE in, in the university framework, commit to the strength conditioning, commit to the support that, you know, that's there. Um, but yeah, just do it the right way. Cause we have it a lot where we have, the, you know, every, I, when I used to recruit basketball players, I'll say this, I've never seen a bad highlight tape, you know, like, like, like everyone say, Oh, these guys, Oh my day. Why aren't they in the NBA? Why are they applying for UWE Bristol? You know, why aren't these rugby, why aren't these highlights of these rugby players? Why aren't they in the World Cup? You know, like, be honest. Yeah. Like everyone, everyone has great highlights. Even I could probably still make a highlight reel and, and, and make a few shots, you know? And yeah, so really, like, if you're going to apply for it, be serious about it and we'll, and we'll support you. Like, once you get to us, we will, I'm, I'm all in. I am all in. Like, if, if, if someone wants to come and they're, and they're the right person with the right background and, and what they want to try and achieve, like, I'm there. Like, let's do it. But, you know, don't don't kind of lie to yourself, first of all, and, and then to me. And uh, just to uh, hope this doesn't sound too negative, but if a student does arrive with us and has been awarded a scholarship and say they fall out of love with the sport and they don't want to play in again, we're not going to kick them out of the university. They obviously will lose. They might lose their scholarship, but they can still study the university. <laughs> Any more questions, George? Or I think you're muted, George. Sorry. Um, I think your microphone is there. You go. Hear me now. Yeah. You hear anything I said? <laughs> Just echoing. We're going to mute you, Sam. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> we we had to have one technical glitch today, so that was that had to be it. Um. So everybody listening in on this call, I really want you guys to, to listen in to both Sam and Guy here, and we will be sharing this recording again with everybody. Um, and please do reach out to us. Um, Sam, if you could put your email in the, the chat box for everybody, and Guy, um, I'm not sure if you want to share yours, <laughs> get bombarded, but... Um, <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I don't mind. I get, bomb I get bombarded anyway, so go for it. Just... Guy, well, I will... a question from you. Um, in terms of sport and... and, and at UE Bristol, what's 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 one sport that really stands out there that's doing really well at the moment? Uh, yeah, I mean, like, so squash, squash is, you know, the, 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 so Mo and Marwan Shabagi, they're, they're Egyptians. He Mo, Mo just lost uh, in the final of the World Championships. He's world number two at the moment. And he finished at UE a few years ago. Uh, we've currently got number 25 in the world and number 27 in the world. Uh, Malaysian guy and an Egyptian guy. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, squash is in for the, before my time. I've only been doing this a few years. It, you know, it's been very strong for 10 years, but I'm most excited about American football as well um, because <laughs> we've got 15 Americans coming from the NCAA with us this September. Um, and we've got a lot of Great Britain uh, players playing in that. Um, and I'm, I'm keen to find a new sport as well. And that's something that I haven't mentioned, but like, you know, if there's any students who, you know, that we've like lacrosse, volleyball, uh, kind of, you know, these niche sports like um, ultimate frisbee, I'm, 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 bit, um, which is in the Bucks framework. I uh, Sam would have shown you on the slides. There's loads of different sports, you know, individual sports as well, which I didn't talk about much, but we have water polo. Yes, there you go. Thanks, Sam. Yeah, water polo is one. We've actually got a GB canoe water polo performance athlete coming to us in September. I didn't even know what it was before she emailed me, but she's coming to Yui. 
So like it, there's a range of like, um, you know, shooting would be interesting. We have, we've had a performance shooter before orienteering another one. I know you said one, I'm kind of listing all of them now, but like, you know, yeah. it, 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 you know, especially those individual sports, I think we can support an individual athlete quite well because we have everything in place for them. You know, it, it, it it's, um, yeah. So it's, so if any students or any counselors are speaking to sort of young South Africans, like, yeah, really open to hearing, whatever it is the, the student does and it doesn't have to be in the bucks framework necessarily you know if we yeah. uh yeah so i hope that helps no it does it does paint a good picture and for me like even listening to matthew's um question about the rugby you know if if i was counseling him and having this conversation it would be like okay what's your goals for rugby you know where are you currently at what's your skill level at do you need to skill it do you need to get into the right conversations and bristol sounds from what sam mentioned from what you mentioned Sounds like the right place for somebody that's going to a new country to sort of put their feet in the ground, have that academic background as well, um, you know, and really have some high level people around you. Um, one sport I benefited from was basketball. It wasn't directly related to basketball, but it helped change my ideas of sport was listening to high level division one in the States um, basketballs and the Bearcats, uh, University of Cincinnati, NCAA um, champion team as well, you know, being able to do rehab in the same room with these guys and the way that they talk and listen and you know just do basic things is, is just life-changing um so matthew i do think that something if you want to have this conversation with um glad he set you up with both um both the two gentlemen yet have a conversation um i've just got another question that's come through here i'm just going to read it okay sam this is for you i don't know if your microphone's working at all um how does the scholarship look like and what's the application process like for a general academic scholarship at, at UE Bristol? So the general academic scholarship, are you hearing okay or is it not going well? It's really echoing really badly. No, nothing has changed. So I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> you know what? Well, uh, Liz, I will get that answer from Sam and I will personally send you that email with Sam as well so we can get that answered for you um, and we'll go from there. Brilliant. Guy, I've got the last question for you and then we can close this webinar up for everybody. Um, your NBA team and who's going to win the next NBA championship? <laughs> Good question. Well, I didn't, I didn't think the Bucks were going to win this championship. Um, uh, that's a really good question. Maybe, maybe Milwaukee Bucks back to back. There you go. So, do you follow basketball yourself? I'm unfortunately Hello. Knicks fan for a very long time. <laughs> so conversation. Well, let's not let's not bore everyone else on this call. But like, yeah, it's uh, at least Knicks had a winning season, which is great this year. So it's it's, it's turning around. But yeah, yeah, lo yeah, very very. I enjoyed the finals. Some of the games. If if anybody else on the call who didn't watch basketball watched the finals, a few of the games, Suns versus Bucks were were insane the endings so uh yeah it was good but anyway brilliant thank you guys and thank you everybody to joining in on today and um sam and guy thank you again really appreciate your time and um allowing you to speak and have this conversation with us as well thank you uh, no worries at all cheers i'll say bye from sam for everybody <laughs>